Regularly scheduled programming will not be seen, so that we may bring you the following special presentation from WVEC-TV. Hello, I'm Bill Fricks, President and CEO of Newport News Shipbuilding, and I wish all of you the happiest of holiday seasons. This greeting comes not only from me, but also from the 18,000 shipbuilders here at Newport News. We've been building ships for the U.S. Navy for more than a century. As sponsors of Navy Christmas, it's our way to say thanks to you, the men and women in the Navy and the Marine Corps, and your families during this important time of year. You do a great job, and we're very proud of you. Whether you're aboard the Newport News built carrier Theodore Roosevelt or deployed elsewhere, you're in our thoughts and prayers. We wish you a safe return and a happy new year. God bless you all. Merry Christmas and welcome to Taco Bell. I'm Lori Dewey, market manager for our stores here in Norfolk. For 11 years now, we have been watching a Navy Christmas. Each year, we are reminded of the dedication, eternal vigilance, and the sacrifices our men and women in uniform and their families make every day on our behalf. It is with great pride we join WVEC as a sponsor of the 11th Annual Navy Christmas. Season's greetings and happy holidays from all of us at Taco Bell. Christmas is a time of year to give thanks, and we at Home Quarters would like to express our gratitude to the military for the personal sacrifices they make in protecting us and in making the world a safer place. We'd also like to thank our employees, including those who serve in the military, and our customers throughout the years. HQ was founded over 11 years ago, right here in Hampton Roads, and no matter how large we get, we will always be grateful for the support of the people in this area for helping to make our success possible. In an effort to give something back to the community and help bring loved ones closer together, it is our privilege once again this year to sponsor WVEC's broadcast of the Navy Christmas. We hope you enjoy this program as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you. From all of us here at Home Quarters, Happy Holidays! Merry Christmas from the Mediterranean. I'm Joe Flanagan, and that is the USS Theodore Roosevelt off Spain. Once again this year, thousands of Hampton Roads sailors and Marines will be away from their loved ones on a long and lonely holiday deployment. In the next hour, we'll try to tell their story and bring them a little bit closer together. It is a real people story. This marks the first time in 11 years we've ever covered a turnover between two aircraft carriers. What an amazing sight. And on the home front, Sharon Alfonsi and Rebecca Schramm will help out lending us their expertise. The 13 News reporters are both Navy wives. Yes, December 25th is a lonely time here in the Med, but it was November 25th that may have been even lonelier. Saying goodbye is never easy. But on this day, it is especially difficult for little K.J. Smoot. Oh yeah, I know he's gonna miss his dad. And, uh... He is saying goodbye to his favorite sailor, his father. A big hug, a final wave, 
and then dad disappears into a sea of blue uniforms. Can you say bye? Bye? KJ's dad is one of thousands of sailors saying goodbye to their families just before the holidays. Oh, it's tough. We know that we're going to miss him so much. And I get to race KJ for six months by myself. <laughs> Lee Sant knows what that's like. Her husband Rob has sailed on three med deployments. Uh, hard. There's no other way to explain it. Um, it's, I've been through it before with my, my husband, but now that we have two kids more than five years old, this is the first time they're going to realize the length of time without their father. Well, I've done this before, but it doesn't get any easier, especially now being over the holidays, but I have to just try to keep in touch and, and get by. Little Josh and Joseph have promised to help mom get by, but that doesn't make this moment any easier for the Sands. Just down the pier, new dad Richard Thrasher worries about his wife and three-month-old daughter, Samantha. Oh, I'm gonna miss her. She's a sweetheart, so... This is his first six-month deployment, and his first little girl. You know, and hopefully nothing will happen, and I just you don't worry about things happening, and I'm not being able to help out and stuff like that. Richard's wife, Tina, has her own concerns. Um, him missing us and him feeling like, you know, he's missing out because he can't be around the baby and, you know, missing home and family. You know, it's kind of rough being out there, especially when you've got a family. It's tough for anybody, but it's even tougher for those who have a family and can't be with them, especially during the holidays. Richard trades in his diaper bag for a duffel bag and kisses little Samantha goodbye. And then, for just a moment, the world seems to stop as Tina and Richard say goodbye. Weeks later and thousands of miles away, the idea of being away from home starts to sink in for Richard Thrasher. You realize that you're gonna you know, be away for quite a long time. It's a little bit sad. Barry Smoot says it's been tough to forget those last moments with his wife and son. She didn't want to let go. She didn't want to let go. There's this hold, holding me real tight and just don't want to let go. And her last, her last words, I love you and uh, be safe. Please write. And it wasn't what little KJ said, but what he did that touched his father's heart in a way he'll never forget. As I left, uh, he was holding his hand out, his arms out, and, call, and calling daddy. And once want me to pick him up and take him with him. Thoughts of Christmas and the family aren't far away for Rob Sam. Wondering what they're doing and how they like all their presents how much I miss them and how much I miss my wife. That'll be the biggest thing going through my mind. It doesn't make it any easier to say goodbyes on the pier or, or at home, but do what you can, I guess. Eight years in the Navy, and the sailor says the toughest times aren't at sea, they're at the pier. You know, deployment day really is the toughest day. I remember when my brother was shipped to Desert Storm just before Christmas. Our family struggled to make the most of the holiday season. This year, the ships may be thousands of miles away, but that doesn't stop Santa. He can make his way to the ship, Sharon, but he has a terrible time finding his way around. Chimneys? No problem. But O-1 levels and passageways and endless stairwells make things really tough on old St. Nick really tough. Flight operations on a carrier is a constant state of noise, power, and people. The choreography between man and machine is something to behold. 19-year-old sailors launch $30 million aircraft. Nine tactical air squadrons fly off the Theodore Roosevelt. Their mission on this deployment is fly, fly, and fly some more. The way it's, uh, this one is structured, 
we will spend uh, somewhat less time in the Adriatic, uh, probably just about, about the same amount of time in the Arabian Gulf. But one of the important things that we're going to be able to do this deployment is uh, have a more structured exercise program with our allies uh, throughout the Sixth Fleet area of operations. Operations that were already taking place in the first month of this deployment. As a matter of fact, in two days we'll be working with the British with a UK uh, battle group that's coming across the Med and we'll meet up with them and fly with those Harriers and fly against their ships and war at sea uh, scenarios and provide them training and also provide us training. But that kind of evolution will go on throughout the entire deployment uh, the way it's presently scheduled. Two squadrons representing Hampton Roads are the eyes in the skies of VAW-126 flying the E-2 Hawkeyes out of Norfolk and the swordsmen of VF-32 flying the F-14s out of Oceana. The goal is to come together as a squadron and an air wing in all areas. You normally peak right before the deployment, and then you work your way through the deployment, making sure that you can maintain that readiness by picking those training evolutions that will help you maintain that, uh, that peak that you've already attained. That goes for the amphibious side of the battle group as well. Over 2,000 Marines make up the 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit, or MU as it's called. The amphibious ready group led by the USS Nassau becomes known as Landing Force 6 Fleet when it arrives on station in the Med. Missions that we could be involved with there are as a, uh, as a trap mission, which was done with uh, the O'Grady mission uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, so we're on standby to provide the kind of services that uh, the ARG-MU team can, uh, is unique to provide. We're experts in littoral operations. Marine and Navy officers work hand in hand on the ARG side of this deployment better known as Com Fibron 8. So as long as the, uh, the Commodore can get the ships close enough for us to, to launch, uh, we're able to get the job started at least within six hours. Men and equipment for those operations come from the amphibious transport dock USS Nashville and the assault ship USS Pensacola, both from Little Creek. Well, the crew found out uh, late this summer that they were gonna have to leave four crews about six months early. So their turnaround to deploy again was within a year. And once the initial shock was over, they've responded magnificently. They've done a great job out here. The spirits are high. And once they found out they had to go, they strapped it on and, and they're ready. Nashville's slogan reads, forever on the side of liberty and country. The attitude seems to be one of all ahead full out here. It is going exceptionally well. We have got a very, very good team of uh, sailors and Marines on board. Uh, we've had uh, some good weather since we've been in the Med. The spirits are high and we're ready to go to work. Some 13,000 sailors and Marines make up this Roosevelt battle group, representing a forward presence for the United States in this part of the world, a decades-old mission. And so by being here and having the uh, force in place, a force that's combat ready on arrival, it has its own sustainment, uh, I think that we uh, can in fact take uh, quite a bit of uh, credit for the relative peace that has existed in this area in the uh, 50 uh, odd years since the end of uh, World War II. Now, we couldn't go without a mighty message of merriment from those manly Marines. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride along the open sea. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride along the open sea. Brian, I am writing you this letter tonight to tell you how much I love and miss you. I don't know what I would do if something had ever happened to you. You have become everything to me. We have been married for almost three years, and it seems like forever. We had one special thing happen on December 9th, 1995 the birth of our first son, Devin. He looks so much like you. When I see him, I think about the love we share for each other. 
I cannot wait until you come home and we are all together again in each other's arms. You're in my heart, on my mind, and in my prayers. Great plan right, sir. Your loving wife, Callie. Hugs and kisses. When the Roosevelt Battle Group arrived in the Med, the first thing it did was relieve the Enterprise Battle Group. Turnover day, they call it. Pure jubilation for the Enterprise, but business as usual for the Theodore Roosevelt. Well, we get uh, all of the ships of the battle groups together. Uh, the carriers are side by side. You've seen that. The small, smaller ships, the cruiser destroyer group ships are side by side. Uh, they pass uh, equipment and they pass some expertise. Uh, all of us go through a training program, uh, an extensive workup, but it's great to have the most current experience passed along to you as you sail into the Mediterranean. Hundreds of Theodore Roosevelt personnel helo over to the Enterprise. Staffers from most divisions get together with their battle group counterpart for a day of document exchange and basic information exchange regarding the just completed deployment. We'll talk about the food, we'll talk about uh, daily life, We'll talk about email, how that's been working, how the communications with home has been working. Talk about administrative stuff, uh, safety uh, concerns, all the stuff you can think about. While the meetings go on, an endless evolution of equipment transfer goes on. Overnight, some 500,000 pounds of ordnance was moved. Due to cost and mere convenience, ammo for these ships stays over here. Well, we had about um, close to 110 people working last night. And our evolution consisted of uh, what I did was uh, run a forklift down in the magazines and we brought it up to the hangar deck level, moved it up to the flight deck and then staged it so they can move it off today. These are the blue collar folks who turn and burn on turnover day. Uh, I love working with the things that go boom. They call us the masters of disasters. <laughs> Mines, missiles and ammo from one carrier to another. It's an exciting day here on board the USS Enterprise on turnover day, and we hear comments like, we're the haves and they're the have-nots, referring to the battle group going home and the battle group going away. And also a comment like, how do you spell relief? How about CVN 71? But it wasn't all business on this day. Walter Buddy Reed on the Enterprise was ending his Navy career at sea, while his son Eric on the Roosevelt was just beginning his in the same department as Daddy. Yes, he is. Uh, he, he's doing the same thing that I did uh, 24 years ago, so he's falling in Papa's shoes, although uh, his feet are much bigger, so I'm sure he'll be able to fill them. Uh, it's great. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm used to seeing him you know, after deployments at home, you know, but now uh, to see him alongside my ship, it's just, it's, it's great. It's overwhelming, really. Todd Perkins off the Vela Gulf got to see his brother Brian on the Enterprise. I'm thrilled because uh, if, if it hadn't been to today, it would have been a year being back-to-back -back deployments that I wouldn't have seen him. So I'm kind of excited. I'm happy. It's only for a few hours, but uh, good luck to him. I'm tired of being out here. Turnover day for the Enterprise battle group meant home for the holidays this year. It's great. Um, you look so forward to turnover day. Same way to Washington look forward to our turnover day. And uh, we finally made it this far. Um, it's been a very fast cruise, to say the truth. Uh, we've been so busy out here until the days really went by fast. Um, hopefully, it go by just as fast for them. Come back in six months. We ain't coming back. Well, to Theodore Roosevelt, uh, we thank you for getting out here on time. And in fact, uh, they're out here uh, a day or two early. And uh, to the folks back home uh, from Theodore Roosevelt families and spouses, we know what you're going to go through. Many of us have been away on the holidays. Um, we thank you for supporting all you do. Thanks very much and happy holidays. From Nassau Medical, happy holidays, happy roads. Hi, I'm Ensign Robert Fort, USS Pensacola. I'd like to say hello, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year to all my friends and family in the Tidewater area. Okay, I'd like to say hello to my mom and dad. They actually live down in Florida, in Kissimmee, Florida. I'd like to say hello to all my neighbors and friends in uh, Newport News, Virginia. From Charlie Weapons, 
Happy holidays, Hampton Roads. Ooh, ooh. Was that hug for Daddy? That was a hug for Daddy, wasn't it? Hmm? Can you blow Daddy a kiss? A big blow. Big kiss. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Can you tell him, say, I love you, Daddy? I love you. <laughs> say, I love you, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. All the way. To the moon. That's right. Judy Stellman calls her three-year-old daughter, Katie, her miracle baby. You want to blow him another kiss? After years of trying to have children, Judy and husband Tim turned to an in vitro program, and it worked. Miracles and the birth of a special child is what this season is all about. When I, when I talk, think of Katie, I just think of joy and happiness, uh, because without her, I think right now, you know, where would I be? When the Nassau pulled away, Tim Stellman was pulling away from Daddy's little girl for the first time. As long as I've been in, being on the ships, being out to sea, the, being the only exception, Katie's always been in my arms or somewhere where I was always holding her or playing with her or whatever she wanted to do. Many families say their goodbyes at home. The Stellmans wanted Katie to be peer-side. To help her understand. I knew she didn't understand what was happening then, but it was something that she could understand uh, later. I could refer back to it when she asked me, um, is daddy coming home today? I'll see you soon. Say, see you soon. Bye. Say bye. 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 Bye, daddy. Not far from Katie, the Richardson family was saying goodbye to James Richardson. I, I just couldn't keep my head up to, uh, to try to keep the tears from, from rolling down. I just couldn't stand. <laughs> leaving my family like that, it's, but it's okay. It's, it's, it was just hard, it was just hard. We sat the two families down for a chance to talk to their Nassau sailors. We learned even the Stellman dog, Rocky, misses Tim. You gonna wave to daddy, wave to daddy. <laughs> we saw Katie's flower that grows each time Tim mails home another petal, and we learned just how much Tracy, Linda, and Charnell Richardson miss James. Christmas Day, I think I'm going to make a dinner for us and, you know, probably sit around the tree, open up some presents, and wish my husband, you know, I hope he calls me Christmas Day so I can wish him a Merry Christmas. Watching the video from home was like being there for James and Tim. It just so happened that Tim called home the day we were there taping. He'd left his glasses behind. Do what now? I will send your glasses with... Channel 13. Oh, okay. All right. All right. That's good. All right. Am, am I going to get a video of this thing they're doing with yes, you? Yes. They're bringing the video. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, that's going to be great. Glasses were on Tim's list and we delivered. Speaking of lists, Tracy had one. It's a little calculator with numbers in it and it stores uh, all the memories. Is what she would like to have. Say it. A dear diary. That's what it is. And a bike. Ooh. And some clothes. After he got caught up, James passed along his message home. I just want to let y'all know that I miss y'all very, very much. And, uh, and that I'll, I will we'll be home in May. And hopefully we can uh, pl do our little trip like we planned, uh, going down to Florida. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm really... Uh, I lost words. I'm trying to hold his tears back. Uh, but I just want y'all to know that I love y'all very much. And I, I think about y'all every night and I pray about y'all every night. Uh. The moment was too emotional for James to go on. Next, it was Judy's turn to talk to Tim. I always love you. That doesn't change. And I can say that uh, every 10 minutes. And uh, meaning every time, you know that I do. And. Um, I do miss you a lot. I'm doing okay. Like James, Tim was missing his family a great deal. So I love you and I miss you and I'm just counting till you're back home again. Bye-bye.
Yes, miracles and the birth of a special child. That's what's on Tim Stillman's mind this holiday season. Katie. Would you be a good girl? I love you very much. I love you all the way to the moon. I love you, honey. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Can you blow Daddy a kiss? A big blow, big kiss. Oh, good girl, good girl. Can you tell him, say, I love you, Daddy? I love you. I love you too, girl. <laughs> say, I love you, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. All the way to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Say, hurry home. As the holiday season approaches, I wanted to express my gratitude to the many Navy families in the Tidewater area. I recently returned from a trip to the Northern Arabian Gulf and the Mediterranean Sea. I spent a lot of time on board our ships talking with our deployed sailors. While no one likes to be away from home during the time, this time of the year, uh, I can tell you that the spirits of our sailors are high. They know they're doing an important job and they know they're doing it very well. During my visits overseas, I've also met with U.S. ambassadors and the civilian and military leadership of many of our allies. The message that I kept hearing was that our naval forces are indispensable to peace and security in their regions. That's a pretty important role to play on the world stage. You can be very proud of our Navy people, of your Navy people, serving at the tip of our defense spear. During the holidays, Navy families share a special connection with each other. Those with a sailor away from home can count on extra support from other Navy families and from the community. That's one of the things that makes Navy families unique and special. I want to thank all of you for the support you give to our sailors and the support you give to each other, not only during the holidays, but every day of the year. Thank you very much and have a happy holiday season. Any sailor or Marine will tell you stateside support means everything out here. Navy wife and 13 News reporter Rebecca Schramm has that story. When a carrier and its battle group deploys, it doesn't just affect the families of the men and women on board, it affects this entire community. Because if you're not married to or the child of someone on board, chances are one of these sailors and Marines is your neighbor or your friend. We've, this morning, we've started working on our friendly letters that Mrs. Jensen discussed with you guys. So these fifth graders from North Landing Elementary have decided to let some of the service members know how important they are. Pete George Jefferson. Pete George Jefferson, okay? They're writing pen pal letters to an air squadron on board the Theodore Roosevelt. Her call name, we did call names, and her call name is Lamb Chop. And we have to write, we're going to be writing back and forth. They probably get lonely sometimes because they probably have families and probably they miss their families. These children aren't the only ones who want to lift the spirits of the deployed sailors and Marines. Like my Lynn Haven Elementary students are decorating banners for the amphibious ship, the USS Nassau. I think that it'll really um, make them happy when they're not home for Christmas with their family. The Nassau isn't just any old Navy ship to these students. This ship has adopted their school. The children hope the crew will hang the banners around the ship during the holidays. And they won't spend Christmas with their family, so maybe that'll be their big Christmas present they get from the school. I drew, like, a Santa Claus, and I wrote Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Josh Condon already knows what the crew member's reaction will be. Wow, they really do care about us. Sending banners is especially meaningful for this little girl, Amy. Her father is cruising alongside the Nassau on the Roosevelt. Um, I wish he'd come home. Because he. this is the first year for him he's not been home for Christmas. What do you think he's thinking? He, I bet he's thinking he wants to be home. <laughs> but it will be several more months before the men and women come home. So even some older kids are hoping to cheer them up. The choral group from Cox High School is recording 17 holiday songs on a cassette tape. 
They'll send the tapes to overseas military personnel who can't come home for the holidays. Uh, just something that I've wanted to do since I moved down into this area and was kind of overwhelmed by the community effort with the military and the bonding and the whole Desert Storm thing and all of that that was going on. The students plan to produce as many copies as they can afford. So what are the families doing to keep busy while their loved ones are away this holiday season? Take a look at this. It's a huge Christmas show put on by USO just for the families whose loved ones are at sea. The reigning Miss Virginia was there, along with other beauty queens singing Christmas carols, a little snow was brought in, and children got to sing and dance with the Bernstein Bears. This audience is filled with people who have a special bond. It's nice. My best friend, is, um, her husband's gone, so we came together, and we do almost everything together now, but it's nice to be able to come and be around people going through the same thing. It will be very tough with Daddy gone, and we're going to miss him a whole lot, but, you know, whoosh, we're strong. The families of each ship even get to record a big hello. Hooray! There's no doubt the sailors and marines appreciate every videotape, every cassette tape, every piece of mail, and every song they get from home. There's a hero If you look inside your heart You don't have to be afraid Of what you want There's a man And a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. And you pass your fear aside. And you know you can survive. So when you feel like hope is gone, look inside you and be strong. To finally see the truth that a hero. December 1996. Greetings from the sea, my love. Today is another day away from you, yet closer, yet closer to the to day, the day, day that, I that I will be home. I miss you. Here I am on watch with miles and miles of open water all around, all around and a longing for you. This seems to be the routine. As the days go by, they tend to blend into one long day away. If you can see it this way, you'll know that I'll be home tomorrow. I love you. I love you, and I'll be home before you know it. I love you, God bless, your husband, Phil. Three eleven on deck. Recovering aircraft in the handler's office is business as usual. And then the COD comes in carrying the most important cargo of all. 55 males here. Well, it also carries people, I guess. That's how we get around out here. Instant work parties form to unload the orange bags of mail and packages. Holiday deliveries can range anywhere from four or five thousand pounds up to ten and eleven thousand pounds. Now, Joe's job. The mail goes from the flight deck to the post office down below. There, it gets sorted into individual departments. Well, they put in uh, close to uh, eighteen hours a day, and efficiency 
is based on the volume mail that we saw. Like, the, for instance, we just received about uh, 2,000 pounds of mail. We had it sorted within three hours. So that's efficiency. One person representing each department stands in line. Nothing can take the place of this assignment. Mail call, mail call, mail call. No, you always want more mail. Definitely always want more mail, you know. They don't, they, we don't get as much as we should, but they try their best, I guess. They work hard. Packages are sorted out in a more open space. Some 6,000 pounds of mail came in on this delivery. Uh, brought the mail down from the, like from the hangar bay down to here, like I said, and uh, sorted out by the working party. Had about 12 people and uh, entered out, sorted out. Here we are at mail call. That special package finds its way to a workspace or birthing department where a sailor can get a taste of the holidays in his home away from home. It's too many times you see people without any mail, all depressed and everything, including me. So when you get, when you get mail like this, you know, especially a package, it, it's good. There's a new twist this year. There's mail and now there's email. For the first time, sailors and Marines are able to communicate with home through cyberspace. I think it's a wonderful system. It's uh, great for readiness in terms of getting in touch with our families back in uh, the Norfolk area. It's, it's super. It's quicker than mail. It's responsive. Uh, can't say uh, bad things about it. It's, it's super all around. Michelle Musey's husband emails her on a daily basis from the USS Nassau. The second day after they left this time, I really had a piece about it um, unlike ever before. Um, just knowing I can communicate. Um, if I do have a question, all I have to do is um, just email it, and usually either that evening or the next morning I will have a response. It's great to be able to uh, get news back and forth right away, but it's also kind of bad, uh, especially with the sailor phone thing. I called home the other night, and the baby was sick, and, and I heard her crying, and I got all bummed out. And, and, uh, but I got a note that night saying everything was fine, so it allowed me to be at ease uh, when the family was going through some tough times without me. In Michelle's case, it's cut down the length of those phone calls. Everything that I've had to say, I've usually said it already in the email. So um, I usually I've never been lost for words, but um, this time it seems like I am. Not everyone has access to the new system. Yes, uh, we have what the, we refer to as uh, nipper and sniffer net. One allows for unclassified mail emails, such as from uh, businesses and other military installations that we can receive email from and then it also allows us to keep in touch with our loved ones. Yes, this high-tech form of mail call is here to stay. Just a few months ago it took 10 to 12 days to get a letter. Now it's going to be taking about an hour. Logging on to stay in touch. Santa was still having a rough time. The directions were easy enough. On the 03 level past the knee knockers to frame 89. Two more bulkheads, and BAW-126 is right there. To heck with milk and cookies, Santa settled for an ice-cold drink of water. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. There was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angels praising God and saying, Glory to the highest, and on earth peace to those in whom his favor rests. One of the great texts from the, from the, the scripture that we use often at Christmas is the one where the angels declare from God, Peace on earth, goodwill towards all. We know something of what that means as peacemakers. We know something of, of the cost that, that comes from, from filling the role of a peacemaker. Sailors are well aware of a certain faith and spirituality out at sea, especially during the holidays. Faith, when we think about it, and when we talk about it out here, uh, encompasses a large area because we're talking about our normal individual faith in God, our, our faith in ourselves that we uh, will be able to do what we've been asked to do. There's faith that um, our families will be protected and will do well while we're not there. There's also the faith that we're not always in contact 
knowing what's going on, that they are safe, that they are um, able to take care of the little problems that come up. You shall conceive and bear a son and give him the name Jesus. Great will be his dignity and he will be called Son of the Most High. On board the Theodore Roosevelt, three chaplains keep the spirit of the season alive and well. From celebrating mass to individual counseling, they stay in touch with all the ships in the battle group. We miss our families. We miss them an awful lot. And, and given a choice, we'd just soon be back home with, with our families. Because we miss them, and because of where we are and what we're doing, I think we were more aware of the blessings in our lives than we possibly would have been if we were someplace else. For Jewish sailors, Rabbi Steve Liebman from Sixth Fleet in Italy flies out to the ships. If without the spiritual side, we're just machines, and we're not. God gave us souls, and this time of the year, especially, it speaks to that side of us. All hands are invited to stand fast for this evening's prayer. Guide us in new adventures. Be with those we love, now and always. In your most precious name we pray. Amen. If you only measure time by the calendar going off, it's going to get hard on people. The spiritual component is what keeps people centered. Uh, we liken it to a rudder. What you believe in gets you through things. The symbols, signs, and traditions of spiritual faith are not lost at sea. It makes things a lot easier. It uh, gives you a little bit of stability in your life. Uh, I went, with mass, went to Mass with my uh, family back in the States, and it's one thing we can continue. Even though we're separated, we're still together. For me, I'll be down on my knees for one, giving thanks to the Lord for another uh, Christmas, giving thanks for his sharing his blood for me, uh, and also be praying on, on my family and the family of all the uh, personnel that's out here. We're aware that this is our turn. It's our turn to stand the watch so that those back home that we love can enjoy the blessings of peace and freedom and the ability to worship as they please. Because of that, in some ways, it's a special privilege to be able to be out here uh, and to serve in the way that we serve. Ever been on a tour of an aircraft carrier before? We'll start at the forecastle where the massive anchor chain is controlled. Well, what they should know about the forecastle is this is this is where liberty starts. We uh, don't get to pull in many places because the ship is so big. So what we do is we drop anchor out. We drop the anchor out and run liberty boats from there. Now, from the forecastle all the way back here to the fantail, it's about 1,065 feet, weighing in at 100,000 tons or more and carrying some 5,000 passengers makes you wonder how this city at sea even floats. There's now a self-service laundromat and a television station and a three-hanger garage to store that all-important air wing. Oh, uh, what I enjoy about it, it's kind of weird. I enjoy the aircraft. I like moving them. I like the challenge of putting them in spots where sometimes you think people say, man, this is close. How can you do it? It's a challenge to see just how much of the limit you can push. Uh, how many birds you can get down here. The only thing that gets frustrating is, you know, being away from family. The most visible spot on the ship is the flight deck. It can be the most hectic spot, too. But sometimes you may see somebody looking a little bit hurried, hurriedly, and maybe something isn't going as organized uh, as possible. You know, maybe a, an aircraft comes in and needs fuel, but also needs ordnance. And you see the ordnance men running around trying to get their job done, but the fuelies want to get their job done. So we try and organize and uh, work together. So sometimes uh, if things aren't going right, you may see some people running a little bit faster than usual, really trying to get something done quickly so that the next person can get on that aircraft to get their job done. Officers eat in the ward rooms while enlisted eat here on the mess decks. One forward and one aft can crank out 18,000 plate folds a day. So four meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and the mid-rats. 
And then we also have a chili bar where the sailors can get uh, chili and uh, all the stuff that goes along with it, and that's open about uh, 23 hours a day. The Carrier Roosevelt also has a full-service medical facility featuring the state-of-the-art telemedicine facility where they can talk to naval hospitals in Portsmouth, Virginia and Bethesda, Maryland. We're in every evolution that you can think about. We have people on the flight deck to care if there's any emergencies up there. Uh, any underway replenishment that we do, we have people standing by in case there's an emergency. Her keel was laid in 1981 at Newport News Shipbuilding. Her construction manager was Miff Miffleton, a 52-year veteran at the yard, and the kind of man who has a soft spot in his heart for the Roosevelt commissioning. I'm kind of sissy enough, it grabs me. You know, I see these kids running up on the, bring the ship, bring Teddy Roosevelt alive. And to me, it's exciting. And to me, it's, 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 it's just an achievement that, uh, you know, that a whole lot of people can stand up and be proud of. From the bridge to the jet engine repair room, Theodore Roosevelt's CO likes to acknowledge crewmen for a job well done. And I tell them what I call a good on you. I pick somebody that's done something just above and beyond, a little bit above something will set the example and set a higher standard, and we focus on that on a daily basis. Yes, good on you, TR. We'll let your construction manager pass along holiday greetings. And it, it gives me a lot of pleasure to send to the uh, men and women of Theodore Roosevelt uh, from the shipbuilders of Newport News a very happy and joyful holiday season. And we're proud of the ship, and we know those of you who operate the ship Remain proud, and we wish you all the very best. Another new face. Season's greetings to each and every one of you. I'm Paul Reason, the new commander of the U.S. Atlantic Fleet. I know that many of you are not going to be at home for the holidays. In my 32 years of service in uniform, I hate to tell you how many I've missed. In fact, I won't tell you because it will just antagonize my family all over again. Several of you will be at sea, at ports around the world, on duty aboard ships, but you must also realize that it's just as tough, maybe even tougher, on those who remain at home without you. Spouses and children always miss us when we're gone. Fortunately, technology helps us today. We have email, we have phone calls, we have faxes, we have so many ways that we can maintain contact. And we should use those to the very, very best of our ability. I speak for every member of the great team, the great Navy Marine Corps team of the Atlantic Fleet, when I wish each and every one of you, sailors and Marines away from home, spouses and families who've remained behind. The very, very best of holiday greetings. Thank you, fly safely, sail safely, get home soon. Happy holidays. Twas the night before Santa arrived on the ship. Michael Ryan was tired and into bed he did slip. The ready room was ready for that big man in red while visions of someone else danced in Michael's head. Buzz Lightyear, the world's greatest superhero, now the world's greatest toy! Buzz has it all! Blocking wrist communicator! Tap action! Wow. Robotic tap action! But best of all, high pressure space waves! So I will say, and they are! Alright, I'd like to go over the notes from the CAG meeting last night. All the CEOs got together about 1900. A good medium drill, please. Oh, 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 oh. Hello. Next day, Santa Claus found his way to the ready room of VAW 126, and were they ever glad to see him? What I brought are some gifts from home. Yeah! At home, Santa's little helpers had been very busy, and lucky for Michael Ryan, his wife Marlene was all a buzz about something. Well, I got him the Buzz Lightyear doll. The hottest thing on the shelf this year. Um, and the reason why I got it, because he's a big kid at heart, and he loves Toy Story. To infinity and beyond! Chad. 
There were books for the skipper and popcorn galore. And even an Elvis, and oh, so much more. I guess I get to dress up Elvis. That's what I always wanted. <laughs> Finally, it was Michael Ryan's turn. Right. The excitement was written all over his face. Oh. A buzz light, yeah! yeah. I can play with my friends. To infinity and beyond. Michael, Merry, Merry Christmas. I miss you, and I love you very much, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Uh, Marlene and Amanda, uh, Merry Christmas. I wish I could be with you. I love you both, and I uh, hope you enjoy Christmas, uh, even though I'm not there. Bye-bye. Among the wives wrapping presents was one husband that night, John Marinchillo. Santa made sure he delivered perfume and a big hug for Lolly. Your husband told me to do this. And of course, there's a hint here. See, this is 1-800-Flowers. I would like flowers someday. And of course, a little Christmas card. So there's little hints in the box from my husband. Husband Michael found the farm animals first, and Something to entertain myself with in the back of the airplane when I'm not controlling. Great. Farm animals. Farm animals. Greg Jensen got a new jacket and tried it on, and it fit. Hi, Greg. Uh, I miss you already, and I love you very much. And I know you'll do the best you can while you're out there. Just be safe and fly safe. We all love and miss you. Take care. God bless. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. <laughs> there was a golf bag for the man wearing green Santa socks, and there was rum cake for Dave Newland, the XO. Skibby! <laughs> Santa, how do you know my skibby size anyway? Thank you, Pam. Pam, I just want to say thanks a lot. Merry Christmas. You always know what I like and what I need. And I want to say happy holidays to everybody back home. I miss you. Elvis just wants to say, Meli Kalikimaka. <laughs> I love you, baby. Greg Macha got a stress reliever while Chris Donahue got CDs and a Stephen King novel. I'd like to just uh, thank my wife, Valerie. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks. Um, Chris, I just want to tell you, once again, we're separated for the holidays. and It's unfortunate, but I love you, and I'm with you there as you are here with me. Merry Christmas. He complains a little bit about the food already, and this is his first cruise, so I figure I probably ought to help him along. He's 6'8", and he, he can eat a lot. So, <laughs> yeah. He has a hard time on the ship. How many he has years? knots on his, on his head. So Lee's gift of sausage was welcomed with open arms by Chris Mang. Thank you, honey. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I miss you. I love you. Can't wait to come home to marry you. From the rookies to the veterans, Santa had something for everyone. It's been four cruises, 12 years, eight and a half years of marriage, a second Christmas away, honey. You've stayed with me and loved me forever, and I love you just the same. Jonathan and Jessica, be good. Santa's on his way. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> Teresa Tinston's expecting. I just want to say I love you, Mike. Um, we're excited. I'm excited for the baby to, to arrive. I'm sorry that you're not going to be here for it. Um, we'll see you soon, and be safe. I love you. Suzanne McMurray will be her Lamaze coach. What a group. We have a great wives club here, and uh, we have a lot, I've, I've met a lot of friends, and I just lean on them, and I just call them. And I tell them, I, you know, I'm going to vent and ride my broom around and, and uh, do whatever I have to do to get, to get through it. Merry Christmas, Seahawks! <laughs> From the Seahawks! Happy holidays, Hampton Roads! Yay! Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, keep it up. Goodbye, everybody, we'll see you. With that, Santa Claus was on his way, flown off the ship by the Seahawks. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. They'll be spending this holiday season in places like Spain, France, and Italy. Some see it as a job, some see it as a privilege, but all see it as a long, long way from home. All of us at WVEC-TV want you, the sailors, Marines, and your families to know how much we appreciate your all-American efforts. In your honor, we light a special Christmas candle here on the front lines of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Thank you 
and good night. Peace on earth, good will to men. Peace on earth, good will to men. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. Wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, good will to men. Peace on earth, good will to men. Peace on earth, good will to men. says Dwight D. Eisenhower at Newport News Shipbuilding. Theodore Roosevelt, greetings from your home of Hampton Roads. Since you've left, the weather's turned miserable, food supplies are dwindling, and it's a miserable existence. I recommend you stay away till at least May. In the meantime, the crew of our newest carrier, Harry S. Truman, wishes the men and women of Carrier Group 8, Carrier A-Wing 3, and Theodore Roosevelt Happy Holidays and a safe cruise! hope you enjoyed watching A Navy Christmas. I speak for everyone at Taco Bell when I say how proud we are of our men and women in uniform and the sacrifices they make every day on our behalf. Season's greetings and happy holidays from all of us at Taco Bell. Christmas is a time of year to give thanks and we at Home Quarters would like to express our gratitude to the military for the personal sacrifices they make in protecting us and in making the world a safer place. We'd also like to thank our employees, including those who serve in the military, and our customers throughout the years. HQ was founded over 11 years ago, right here in Hampton Roads, and no matter how large we get, we will always be grateful for the support of the people in this area for helping to make our success possible. In an effort to give something back to the community and help bring loved ones closer together, it has been our privilege once again this year to sponsor WVEC's broadcast of a Navy Christmas. We hope you have enjoyed this program as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you. From all of us here at Home Quarters, Happy, Happy Holidays! Holidays.